potentially one of the guys that uh, we kind of say has one of the highest floors, right? Like when he's not playing well, he's still getting oh top gosh. fives. Is uh, Calvin Heimberg, and he joins Tour Life now. Calvin, welcome back to the show, brother. How are you doing? So, hey, I'm doing man, good. Uh, you're a popular Nashville. person. Oh, Nashville. Okay, nice. Um, you know, got in my first uh, practice rounds here at Mill Ridge today, and um, you know, I, I think I think the the course is going to play pretty tough for me this coming week. Oh boy, yeah. Is it yeah. as bad as uh, I'm seeing and hearing through the grapevine? Um, I don't. I don't think the course is necessarily terrible. I don't. I don't really have many complaints necessarily about the course. I just think uh, not having a forehand at this course in particular is probably mm. going to to hurt quite a bit. Um, but I, I don't. I don't hate the course. I, I, I've definitely heard some people complaining about it, but I don't. I don't think like there's necessarily a ton to really complain about. There's a couple holes that I feel like meh. Like there's like one par three I can think of off the top of my head somewhere in the middle of the course it's like kind of uses old hole 18 hole 11. is that hole 11 or i don't yeah, yeah that one i'm not i'm not really sure what they wanted there um the best shots that i've seen have been like lefty backhand turnovers so mm. um but as a righty i'm not i'm not really sure what i'm supposed to do there i guess maybe blast it over the trees and try to make a putt coming back i don't know but uh as a whole i i I think the course is okay. I think uh, people just, especially when things get changed, they tend to be a little more critical of things than they yep. maybe should be. Um, but yeah, for me personally, I, I just think the course is going to play extremely difficult without a forehand. So you, you're talking, you know, you brought it up. How how is in the, how is the injury injury going? Like how where are you at on that? Where are you expecting to be able to start throwing forehands again? Um, you know, I probably won't throw any this week. Um, next week we're gonna, you know, give some a toss, probably lighter ones. See if maybe I might be able to scramble out at Champions Cup uh, a little bit with it. But really, I'm not too concerned about pushing it too quickly right now. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't really see the need to to use it this week. This this tournament doesn't um mean a whole yeah. lot to me it's just another tour event so um it's just it's like you know, leading up to the next one yeah does like uh throwing backhand affected at all like is there ever a point in time when you're throwing a backhand where you're like Ooh, no no the, I, or is I, it just completely yeah, fine? never never tweaked it throwing a backhand so backhand doesn't seem to do anything to it hmm Oh, so so it's basically the same thing as just resting playing this weekend. Because what I would say is like, why not take the whole week off, go over to Champions Cup, practice a little bit, figure it out, you know? Because we were just talking like, you're you know you're in that kind of air of major major bus yeah. kind of thing. You know? Yeah, no, it's something I, I've actually you know was kind of thinking about a little bit. You know, after I played the course today. Um, I don't know, and it's possible, but I, that I might head over there early. But I, I think I'll probably still end up playing here. I, I feel pretty comfortable out at Northwood. I know they changed. Or I've heard they've changed a few holes out there, but um, I think like the ending stretch is uh, combining some of the old holes. So I think we finish okay. on that really cool uh, par five. I think is the ending hole. Okay. Cool. Where the the bass the the hole that's like as you're driving in the hole that you pass on the right. The, oh, basket, yeah, yeah, yeah. the basket's yep. on the hill. I believe that's the final hole this year. Okay, cool. So it's a little yeah. bit more out in the open, I think, is what they're trying to do at most of these events. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a place I feel pretty comfortable. And then with only a few tweaks, I don't think it'll take too much practice to really feel that comfortable out there. We've played, you know, we played out there for, I guess it's maybe like three years now is how long we've yeah. playing that course. So. Yeah, and um, we had that one seven-hour round out there too, so we know every nook and cranny of uh, Northwood. Exactly. Really well. I know where all the worst shots land. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That was that was a on crazy, your, crazy round. On your sidearm, like when you're practicing, do you ever just like throw one in to check, or are you just like, I'm not even going to try it. I'm not even going to look at it. I don't want to know. I'm going to just give it time, do my rehab off the course, and then eventually, maybe in the field, be like, okay, how does this feel? 
Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't thrown them at all. I actually pitched like one tiny one today, and that was the first forehand I had thrown. I guess probably since whatever chess.com or or whatever it was. Oh. So like I, or but yeah, I, so I haven't been throwing them. Um, it's just not really been something I've been pressing to get to push through. I think you know at first you know I kind of did that a little, and I probably made things worse than than they would have been if I had just stopped a little earlier. And yeah. um, so I'm not really necessarily pushing too hard um, on that. And I I will eventually just go out to a field and you know throw some soft ones and then see where that puts me and then maybe throw some a little harder if they they feel okay and just slowly ramp up you know how much power i can put into them so these last three events calvin you've gone third fifth and second yeah. what are what are things that you are actually working on or is, is there anything that you can like pinpoint of like this is what I need to change in order to, you know, turn that second into a first or turn that third into a first. Um, I don't know. It can be tough to necessarily pinpoint. Like I, I think, you know, I, I don't necessarily think I threw the greatest when I was out at, at Houston. Um, you know, I still putted pretty well. I had like one little hiccup at the end of the second round where I missed two circle one putts. But other than that, I think I made the rest of my circle one putts at that tournament. I made all my circle one putts out at Austin. Um, I, I, it's just like, I think sometimes I just lose strokes when I, like you throw a bad shot. And then I think like without the forehand, sometimes you just lose the ability to, to scramble or you throw like an almost really good shot. And now I'm forced into like, throw in like a weird step out or patent pending as opposed to just, you know, reaching out. So it's just like, I think, I think if like on most of the courses we played the last, I guess my last three tournaments, like if I executed my game plan perfectly, I could birdie most of the holes. Mm. And, but it's just, it's really, it's just when you, you throw a little bit off of that perfect game plan, you don't necessarily have the ability to, you know, scramble and create extra opportunities for yourself when you might've been off on, on the first shot. Do you think your game right now, if you go out and you execute, do you think your game is good enough to beat everyone? Or do you think that you still kind of have to have some things go your way? Uh, I think it's going to, it's dependent on the course. Like okay. I, I really feel like I, I probably could have had a chance at winning, you know, the past three tournaments that I played. I don't think they were super forehand uh, dominant, like obviously, as I said, scrambling would have been nice sometimes. Definitely given some strokes up there, but um, most of the most of the holes you're able to game plan, and like maybe the shot's more difficult, but you can throw a backhand and and still score. Um, so I, I definitely think it's still it's still capable and, and possible. I mean, I was I was in it in Austin and then last week, so. I mean, both both down to hole 18. So it, it's definitely still possible, and I don't necessarily think things have to go my way. I just have to just have to execute the shots. Um, I think there is a lower margin of error for me right now, but um, I do think it's still possible to win out there. Well, two things that didn't go your your way was the rollaways that you had on. I don't know what the hole is because they changed all of them, but the one where you were kind of going through the trees up up through the left yeah and I, I think yeah, it's what, eight now is it hey um yeah it's right after it's right after the uh, the par four that you're throwing over like the ravine or whatever um yeah. so someone someone you know mentioned on twitter and i want to bring it up because i think it's an interesting question do you think that the pro tour needs to do something to prevent rollaways and their thought was you know, outside of maybe like say circle one X or sorry, outside of like bullseye, if they made some sort of longer grass or, you know, maybe you throw some brick there or I don't know, something, they were basically saying if what your shots did, you know, hit the basket or hit the pole and then hit the ground immediately right there and then roll off, should a shot like that only roll off 10 feet? Yeah, I'm not sure there's a whole lot you can do. I really only, I think only one of the shots that I threw was really impacted terribly by the basket. The first 
the first round where I kind of like slid up into it. And since the, the bases are kind of like this, you know, kind of put it up on edge. But the second, the second one, when I went and watched it, I mean, I hit left of the basket and it was already kind of rolling and I hit it and then it just kind of like slid around it. So it was already rolling before it even got to the basket. It's just, you know, it's like one of those things where it's, you just wish it stopped it. And it seems even more improbable when I hit the same base the day before. But I don't know if like, there's really a whole lot to do, like, especially in that situation, that green is just like super sloped. Um, and that kind of like, stuff. We got to start wrapping it with pillows. So it's just well, like. Well, what I, what the question's more like, what if they create like a barrier? So what if they had like a semicircle on that slope? So anything that gets close to the basket and then starts rolling down the slope, basically hit into the barrier and drops the disc. Well, now you're going to hit the barrier. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think it's a good solution. I'm just saying what other people are are saying should happen. They just want to see shots that like get close to the basket. But then I would just say like maybe throw it softer, like right, have it come in without as much pace. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think know. it's There's just other, one of those things that it's a you know, freaky it's thing. Just, it's just unfortunate that it happened, but I don't think there's really much to change. Um, like because we we all want to see the rollaways right when like the person. Uh, clanks it into the cage and it drops down and rolls away. Like that's how that's the only way you three putt. You can't, can't really three putt that much in disc golf. It's very difficult to. Yeah. I mean, I think those, those sloped greens definitely create that possibility, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a whole lot to change. Cause like you even see weird reactions when the pro tour was doing the little like soft cushion, like wraps around the bottom of the pole. Like I watch people come into those and like, yeah, it absorbs the uh, the shock when it when it comes into it. But then, like it, those were like almost so stiff that they would it push stuff back off of them. And I saw crazy reactions off of those too. So, I think, um, and I mean, even back before any of that, like I've seen people, you know, hit hit the pole and pop up and roll on a slope green. So I, I don't I don't know that there's a whole lot to to really change there. I think currently with the little the square bases they have that are kind of like pyramids, it probably increases the odds of, you know, getting a disc back up on, on end and rolling. But I mean, it's maybe it's make it the opposite, know. flip the pyramid upside down. Then when it hits, it kind of like maybe shoves it back down into the ground. I mean, that might work. I don't know how that would look as far as the, uh, the ad space and everything, but, um, I think yeah, the, what uh, if it was just like a, like an ice cream cone, like it all, went yeah. all the way up to the basket. And he was made like an yeah. ice cream cone. That could actually look nice, Yuli. Hey. That could actually look nice. <laughs> you I never thought... know. But yeah, I mean, I think I think rollaways are always gonna be a part of the game. Um, I don't think any of us probably want to see them do something too crazy about it. Uh what were your thoughts on the drop zone on hole eighteen? I mean, that's that's where it's always been. Um I mean, I think it's it's a weird, weird hole. I, I, I'm always, I'm not always a huge fan of holes where it's like, throw it out of bounds and then advance to a drop zone and you just play from there. I, I always feel like that's, especially a hole like that. Like I don't necessarily think it, it really needs it. Like I, I really think we should probably just be play where it, it's last in bounds on that hole in particular. But um, yeah, if, it, if they did that way, your shot and. Uh, Ben's shot would have been drastically different. Ben would have had like a pretty hard second shot still. He probably would have been like 350 feet or so. Um, mm. w- yeah. Did you guys like the change of that becoming hole 18? W- what were you guys' thoughts on that? Um, I think I like the old finishing stretch a little more than the new one. Um, you know, finishing on what used to be seven, seven, four, five, as opposed to what are now like, I don't know the numbers. They're they're weird, but yeah, the the um, the new the new changes. Like I feel like I just felt like the old last three holes, you had a chance for two or more stroke swings on every single hole, mm-hmm. and I don't really feel that way um, coming down the last three. Like I feel like what whatever what it what is sixteen now is like a pretty routine birdie if you got the the backhand forehand combo. Um, mm-hmm. And then the next hole, like it's it's really not bad. You can throw a hyzer out to the left and then have a hyzer into the green. So I, I feel like the the only hole that really 
kind of brings in two strokes in my mind without like a crazy error, it would be the last hole. And that's just, you know, a lot of times with the shots you're throwing is pretty much you get the two or you get the four unless you play for the, the three, of course. Yeah, the there, old there's, was there's like no the chance to get a five either. Finishing hole ever. ever. Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. Yeah, I, I, I tend to like par four finishing holes a lot more too. I know, um, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, you got to walk up to that tee shot, throw the tee shot. And then you, based on the results of that, you know, like you got to walk down the fairway and, you know, you got to execute another shot. I just think there's, there's more drama maybe to be built on a, a par four finishing hole than, than there is a par three, but uh, we get another par three finishing hole this week. So, Oh, heck yeah. People love that. Um, let's, let's jump back to your final round hole seven. You throw your tee shot and you, you know, you hit the tree. It's the one over the, the par four over okay. the ravine. Yeah. You hit the tree, you drop, you drop OB. Uh, I'm assuming right next to the OB, you didn't really have a shot in. So you take it considerably far back yeah. and then you proceed to throw what looked like you made it look really easy. I'm glad the commentary, uh, I'm glad Yuli and, and germ kind of talked about how difficult that shot was, but any thoughts on like laying up to that spot next year? Just like a little jump putt off the uh, tee and just throw that shot, throw that as your second shot. <laughs> no, no, I don't think I would ever play that hole that way. Um, How hard yeah, was no, that shot? Out. I mean, I did get an incredible skip off of that shot as well. That really, yeah. that really helped. I mean, it was closer than I thought it was going to be when I let go of it. But yeah, I mean, that hole really is pretty, pretty routine, or it should be. It was just an awful tee shot. If you can throw far on that hole, there's there's really nothing you should be worried about. It's just kind of rip it over the ditch and, and then, you know, you, you kind of deal with the, the green, which is kind of the real, you know, yeah, problem. The second the shot, the, yeah, yeah, the, the second, second shot is really what good. should be the, the real problem on the whole. It's just through an awful tee shot, but, um, you know, getting out of there with a par was, was pretty sweet and, uh, definitely, definitely crucial, um, not to be bleeding, bleeding too many strokes in the final round. How bad did you want to throw a forehand on 16 after seeing Simon basically do the shot that you did and, and go OB? Um, I mean, I, I've gone into all these events pretty much uh, telling myself I wasn't going to throw them. You know, I, I thought like maybe I would bust one out, you know, at the end. But honestly, I got there and I mean, I executed that over the top shot the prior two days. So I, I'd gone birdie birdie the prior two days. So it wasn't really you know, much to think about for me. I, I just threw it a little long and it, it really wasn't that bad. I think I was probably maybe like 24 or five feet away from the basket. I was still inside the circle, just on the other side of that little fence. Um, I just had like a, a stance I wasn't super comfortable with. I, I don't love like straddle putts when I'm closer to the basket. And mm -hmm. I had to kind of straddle out because there was this little, this little twig that was up kind of by the fence. And, uh, yeah, I mean that that putt was was not good. Skipped it off the top, um, but I, I don't think I don't think I really care. Like I wasn't struggling with that that over the top approach. So okay, I, I wasn't. It really forehand didn't really come across my mind because I I hadn't seen the backhand not work. And I think too when like the wind the wind gets up, I think the backhand dominant players have more of an advantage. I just think the, I think the backhand you can you know you, you generate so much more spin than the forehand, which I think helps a lot in wind. Yeah, so that might have I don't know. Seems yeah, to help. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Sometimes. I mean, I I don't know. I think I think when it gets windy, it's just pretty important to have them both so that you can uh, you can kind of fight the wind both directions and you don't have to yeah for sure fight as much. So, but yeah, in that, in that particular instance, I mean it was. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't thinking, man, do I bust out this forehand? It was really more of a, I was really just thinking about, you know, executing the backhand like I did the prior days. Did, did your tee shot on 18 clip the tree? Uh, the first tree? It, yeah. Did it? It, it was like, hard to I tell. I don't know if it clipped it. It, it definitely like kind of went through the edge of it, but 
it was not where I was aiming. Um, I made the same mistake the prior day on the hole. I was just mm. too inside. I like, I'll, like the shot had enough distance. I feel like to get there. It's just like I needed to instead of like kind of aiming here, I needed to aim wider and just trust the disc to come back. You know. Why were guys going the Heiser route more this year? I feel like a, I feel like in years past, I've seen a lot more people go down the middle. Yeah, this year we kind of had like a, a helping wind, I feel like, a lot on that hole. It was kind of like tail crossing. So it made it made the hyzer oh. I mean it just didn't it didn't play as long this year to throw the hyzer. Um, Yuli, did you go for that past, one? Do you like what was that? I uh, well I was seeing if Yuli went for it. I went for it all all three rounds. Not no hyzer. Oh, no, oh, you went no up the middle. Chance. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, big boy Yuli Heiser. What? I could I could throw the Heiser as hard as I could and probably lay up by the drop zone. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that yeah, makes just, a lot more sense then. I just think it was playing shorter with that helping wind for the Heiser. And if you, you kind of had the power, it it just seems like a more straightforward shot. You don't have to like necessarily move your disc and have it drift left to right and and then back the other direction. So um, I think that was the play. I just, I just didn't throw it well. I didn't throw it well back to back days. So just should have probably not been my play, I guess. So you made a comment about you weren't like really too worried about this week, not having a forehand, even though, you know, playing this course, it, it seems like a forehand is going to be very important. Are you at the level now where you're almost just kind of waiting for the majors? Like, obviously, I'm sure you still want to win every tournament you enter, but is that kind of where, you know, winning winning another time on tour, it's like, oh, great, nice, but you, you're really wanting to get that major win. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know. I, I, I want to win every tournament I, I enter, you know. I, I just, I mean, I, I just think currently, you know, maybe expectations are a little bit lower just because I know, you know, there's going to be some tricky spots. Um, but I, I definitely just, I still care about every tournament I play. Um, I just, after playing today on, on this particular course, I just, I know my odds are lower than, than they would have been like the past three weeks. Um, there's just like holes that I, that there's just holes that I think that, if you have a good forehand, you're probably going to be giving yourself a look quite a bit. And then there's even some par fours where just the approach to me just seems way more open throwing the forehand than, than throwing a backhand. Um, so I, I know the odds this week just they, they feel more stacked against me than they, they have in the, you know, the past few. Well, we don't I have. Like, yeah, go you. I like took notes today and uh, during the practice round, and I was, I was counting like, seven seven holes to where i was like okay if i you know I, i'm not like i have a serviceable forehand like i'm not yeah. throwing um not top 25 not, of yeah. course well i'm not throwing it very far but i can throw it like 330 360 somewhere in there yeah and there was i think there was like seven seven shots that i came up with to where i was like okay if i play these perfect i could be like three under and like calvin saying if you have that more power, like all hyzer forehand play, or even a long flex play, yeah, like you're going to be giving yourself looks on those quite often. Yeah. And I was thinking that I might not even play this week because of being so far behind the eight ball on there. I, I can't afford to like lose seven shots before I even start. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. We don't see that happen very often, but I feel like that's going with how many events the pro tour has. I feel like that will be a trend moving forward is like certain players just like, I'm not going to that tournament. That course is not good for me. Cause like, why? Yeah. Why would you? Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, if it's, if it's calm, if the forecast is calm, it's totally doable. You can throw roll. There's other shots you can throw to kind of manipulate yeah. the flight patterns and stuff. But in Nashville, it's always windy. And so mm -hmm. not only do you have like that barrier of angle control, but then the wind as you're throwing more stable to get the shot that they're trying to make you do and a slight miscorrection of that shot, which is like usually a flex stall to hit it soft, a slight miscorrection and you're gone. And they're putting out a bounds on like the bottom of the slopes and stuff. And so it's like, they really designed the course, um, 
kind of like a certain way to enter into the greens. I feel like for a lot of these, yeah. and it's it's not, it's not with a backhand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of a lot of holes, or like you might be able to make something work, but it's it's going to be tricky. It'll definitely yeah. be tricky, and like the room for error is is very low. But like, there's even like I don't know, like man, I don't really know the numbers very well out here, but I, there's this one par three that I can think of, and it's like. Like it has this little sucker tunnel gap that you can see it. It's like a 360 foot hole, maybe. Uh, it was on the course last year. It might have been hole 14 last year, I think. Is it right before the really tough par four? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's right before that. But like, oh, is, that, is that tunnel super tight now? It's even more overgrown. Oh yeah. Uh, no, no. It, it's about the same, but it's just like. They, it's such a tight so, tunnel and the OB line on the right. It's just oh, like, yes, it's, it's right. right there. And then there's the big bunker on the left side of that tunnel that it's like, especially if like, I'm not throwing a forehand at all. If I throw in that bunker, that's an instant bogey. If yeah. I miss a little and I kick that's to the a, right. That's a flex forehand bogey. hole for sure. Yeah. Like, like you, you can see the basket from the tee, but the play is literally to flex it out of the, mm -hmm. the visual fairway. You kind of like, push it out to the left and then come back in. So like, yeah, like that one in particular, like if I, I like pretty much have to just, unless I'm going to, I'm feeling great. And <laughs> want to try to pipe a fairway driver down that little tunnel, I'm just chip a chip a I'm back in out to the outside putter out to the left. And then, yeah. then having to throw a putter into the green. Yeah. It's tough to win tournaments when you start playing holes they, that you can't birdie. Yeah. They used to have the OB line being the um, fence, oh. and they actually moved the fence. It's on the opposite or the, side, the, right? Yeah, they moved the line now to the tree line. So now it's, like, even closer. Because I was going down the tunnel last year, I remember. And then because I felt like it would be really tough to, like, get into those bushes and get to the other side, throwing a back end. And now they're like, yeah, no, <laughs> we're going to bring it out here. <laughs> Yeah, it's right there. Like, there's no room for air. Like, if you're like, and you're pretty much forced to throw like a little hyzer flip up. It's like you slightly over flip it, you're out of bounds, right? You yeah. over hyzer it, you're in the tree bunker on the left. It's, it's not a backhand hole. I know. It that. seems like they're like. It seems like that hole is like close to being good. They just like they reversed it. They needed to make the right play, the straight shot. But the risk is if you mess up, you go OB. And then they need to make like the really, really difficult play, the flex forehand. So then that way you actually can play the risk reward where right now it's like no one is throwing up the gut if they have a forehand. See, I don't feel like uh, it's bad to have a hole like that. Like I, I'm fine with that hole in particular, but there's like three that are almost the exact hole. Like you go to hole, our new hole two is oh, yeah. the same shot. It's the same shot as that one, even a wider but, hyzer, but you can throw it a flex. completely a new t hole two? I'm, no. It, old, new hole two is old hole. I don't know. It, it used to be on the course. Okay. Um, I feel like that hole is a little bit easier. It plays a little shorter and it's a little yeah. wider. But, but yeah, it is It is another one of those holes where you, you, you pick, you're basically throwing a forehand out around that big tree or, you know, you're throwing a baby <laughs> flex shot with a mid-range down the gut, you know? with ob that they brought out again like closer to the fairway so like yeah. you miss a little bit and you can go you can go ob i don't know i felt oh. like there was a few few yeah holes there's like definitely that. a few or it's like you know we were just talking about whatever hole number it was we were just talking about two holes later that approach into the green like it's wide open forehand backhand's pretty congested it's a par four new par four that uh, uh -huh. i don't know definitely definitely i definitely saw a lot of forehands out there and Maybe even more so just based on the direction the wind was blowing today. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's like going to be the consistent direction or whatnot, but I was definitely having to throw a bunch of shots that were like on backhand trying to fight the wind and, and just not get thrown out of bounds, which. Yeah. It could flip and then just be like a beautiful wind for some backhand, just pushing yeah. you straight. I mean, it could happen, but, uh, I don't know. It played, it played so hard today for me. Hopefully you guys don't get any rain either. That course is not drain well. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Yeah. Yikes. That means it's going to be flop fest all week. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll all see. right. Well, 
Uh, we appreciate you jumping on, Calvin. It's always fun to talk to you. Uh, I guess good luck this week if you end up playing. If not, we'll see you in what is it, Peoria? Is that where we're going? We're out Peoria? To Peoria next. We'll see you in Port Peoria, and we are running back the worst triple shot of all time video as well. So we'll have to, we'll have to try to beat our score. I know the course is a little different, but. We got what we sh- what did we shoot last time? Like 17 over? Actually, I don't even remember. I have we might no clue. Have... Well, I'll look it up. All I remember was Ezra hit a tree five feet off the tee pad to start the video. And I knew it was going to be down. <laughs> I knew it was going to be downhill from there. I think I actually threw. I think I actually think that. I think I actually threw a bad shot. And Ezra was like, oh, well, we can't do worse than that. And then he proceeded to hit a tree right off the tee. And we were like, yeah, well, there's always a worse option out there. Yeah. So, uh, you, you got anything else? Uh, no, no. Nope. All right. Calvin, um, any, any shout outs, anything, anything going on right now that you want to let the people know? Um, nothing, nothing new really right now, but, uh, just shout out my sponsors in millennium squatch, um, flight factory. Uh, as always, just shout them out. You know, they keep me on the road and all y'all, you know, supported me, you know, through merch and everything. Thank you all. And, uh, you know, without you, all the fans, it's really, this isn't possible for us. So super thankful for all of them. Are we going to see that, uh, Jersey shirt that Zach Melton was wearing? Is that I want my any, face any... on it? Well, I think it had a lot of your faces on it. I think it had about no, 50. No, faces I think on that it. is a custom made one for him by him, but, um, Okay, but so maybe I, I maybe if you got enough in the future, but maybe if you I'm got enough demand, that. enough demand, enough people asking about it. Yeah, I mean that's possible. You know, if there's enough demand, <laughs> maybe maybe we'll make it happen. But I just can't imagine that the, <laughs> the demand is that high for a shirt that just has my face just all over it. Guys, if you want this shirt, and trust me, you want this shirt. Go right now to Calvin's Instagram on his last post. Say, I want this shirt. Blow it up. Blow it up. <laughs> comment i want this shirt um is that is it posted anywhere right now that you can see it so people can get kind of get a sneak peek did melton post anything on his instagram with wearing it passive right there has to be something at some point but if not you know i'm sure i can get him to send me a picture of it i know he has pictures of it so yeah maybe do a little maybe do a little poll maybe you know have him send a picture of it put it up on your instagram story do you want one of these do you not want one of these and see what happens okay maybe i'll do that yeah I'll, you I'll already do, have I'll you already the have picture i'll track down the picture i'll make the poll i think i know how you're voting but i just well, don't I'm, know i'm voting can... yes you already have three people in the chat saying they'll buy it you so see but i just don't that's, know that's you know, sales right yes, there are you really gonna buy it you know like they're saying i'll buy it i mean what do you what do you want them to say no are you gonna buy it bro are you gonna buy it oh i mean come on <laughs> i mean you can you know you can just you know you know, hand that one underneath the table to me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. All right. You want a free? <laughs> yeah, it's free promotion for you, Calvin. I'll wear it on. I'll wear it on one of these podcasts. Okay. All right. Maybe Maybe I'll, here, I'll, I'll trade you. Just so here, I can I'll, see. Just I'll, so what about I can trade? See. What about trade? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a tour I'll, life I'll shirt. I'll, I'll trade shirts. All right. I'm in for a trade. Uh, another Jersey person swaps? said that. Another oh, person oh. said they'll buy it. That's four. You got four people right now in the chat saying they're willing to buy it. So. All right, sweet. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, all right. Well, we appreciate it, Calvin. Good luck this week if you decide to play. If not, we'll see you in Peoria. Thank you.